Well, the first time from a distance, Mount Kilimanjaro doesn't look real. How can such a massive layer cake of volcanic rock shoot up from the Tanzanian plains and touch the clouds so high that its peak is snow-capped on the equator? In this video, I set out to climb the largest freestanding mountain on Earth. But first, we need to flash back two days ago to Arusha, where we are prepping for the nine-day trek to the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. Abadi Tanzania, Eric Khan over here from the streets of Arusha. I'm actually in a market right now. We're getting all of our supplies for the hike up Kili tomorrow, and we're with some local guys just showing us around. For the trek up Kilimanjaro, we got lots of veggies, fruits, and enough grains to last the nine day adventure. You know, only the essentials. The best coffee I've ever had was from Costa Rica. I just smelled this coffee. The best smelling coffee I've ever smelled. Mm. Yeah, this is a Maasai doctors, and the one we're using, the Maasai medis here. Lots of people that used to come to buy the medis here. If you have the problem, you tell the doctor, you come to get the problem. So this right here, this is the machete I got yesterday at the Maasai market and it's funny because we were walking around the market in Arusha and every single person was kind of giving me like a head nod like when they saw my uh, machete because this is the traditional Maasai machete. So that's kind of cool but other than that we stuck out like sore thumbs. Like <laughs> they say uh, <laughs> like every day here. But now we are at Wilbert's house. We just unloaded all the food for the trek tomorrow. This is all the food that you need to go on a nine day trek up Kilimanjaro. <laughs> Back at the hotel, we laid out all of our gear on the beds and divided the gear to be put either in our day packs or our duffel bags. Prior to the trip, Killy Warriors sends out a very, very thorough gear list so you are 100% prepared for the trek. As you can see in our map, it shows the new map of Mount Kilimanjaro. There are so many routes to the top of Kilimanjaro, but that doesn't necessarily mean they are all equal. The most popular route is the Mashima route, which takes about six days. And since it's the most popular, it also has the most foot traffic. So we are taking the Western Breach route, which is nine days long and has a much, much higher summit rate than the others. The more time you spend at elevation, the more time your body has to acclimate to the conditions, hence a higher rate of success. Only a few outfitters offer this route due to the expertise required of the head guides and porters, which means on our summit we aren't climbing with any crowds. We're gonna get a full night's sleep and then tomorrow morning we set off for day one of our trek of Mount Kilimanjaro. Day number one of a nine day trek to the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro. Biggest tip, pole pole, which means very, very slowly. Also, drink three to four liters of water per day. But this is it, we are starting in the jungle. Day number one. We set off into some of the most lush and dense vegetation I've ever seen. The life in this place, a sea of endless green all around. As soon as you start climbing, you feel the altitude immediately. I mean, even right now I'm talking, not really short of breath, but I'm feeling that we're at almost 8,500 feet. Little weather update, sunny skies, no rain. Normally this is the rainiest part of the climb, but look behind me, beautiful. You don't even feel like you're on the mountain yet, just because it's such a broad mountain. You know, it feels like we're just kind of through the back country. Yeah, yeah. But the porters. The porters are the real studs of this trip. Before we set out, every porter's bag was weighed at the National Park gate. Any excess weight was taken out in accordance with Tanzanian law. What's the maximum weight that the porters can carry? Compulsory with the National Park, they're only allowed to carry 20 kilos. Tanzanian law, it's a government law, and it's the way of to support the local community. Since like, the mountain is in here, the way to benefit, apart from the park fees we get, is to get a job. Yeah. from the clans who are coming. I think for our trek, we have close to 20 porters. There's five of us climbing up. It's Pat and I, a mother and her two sons. The honest truth is without porters, making it to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro would be nearly impossible. You'll see as the trip goes on the crucial role that the porters play in the summit. We emerge from the rainforest 9,200 feet above sea level at Big Tree Camp. At the lower elevations, the body can still process most foods. And we had an amazing dinner by Chef Lewis. 
Food. The food will dramatically change as we ascend the mountain. Big meals like this will become very rare. Our drinking water we purified from the streams nearby. And now we're going to bed after a successful day one. We'll see you in the morning. It was a good night, got a good night's sleep. The tent smelled like it was a lot colder this morning than we thought. It was probably in the, would you say, mid 40s? Yeah, we're going to Shiro One Camp today. We are ascending from just about 9,200 feet to 11,800, right? We'll be reaching 11,800, but we'll camp at 11,005. They like to say, Hike high, camp low. So every morning the guys would sing like that. When your crew is fired up, it's contagious. The rest of us, we just got that energy from them. And it's one of those things where I know a lot of companies that do Killy hikes have the singing. But apparently Wilbert was saying that Killy Warriors, they were the first company to start singing on the mountain. And you can tell when they sing that they mean every single word that they're saying. And with that, we set back off into the rainforest. At some point, you have to say goodbye to that canopy of shade and you emerge into the heather zone. At right about 10,000 feet, rainforest stops. In the heather zone, the vegetation becomes much, much smaller and less dense. There's no more shade, no more canopy. We lost the canopy from the rainforest. Yeah, and that was critical. And a lot of people, especially on my Instagram, were like, Eric, why do you need that Indiana Jones hat for this? You will fry. Yeah, for the heather zone, sunscreen, Wide brim hat, glasses. Sunscreen every hour. Every hour and water. Today is actually easier than yesterday. Yeah. You know, you get used to the altitude pretty quick. But there's this guy I know, his name is Sedrock. He's a punk. <laughs> He's the biggest punk on Kilimanjaro. Almost the biggest punk as Wilbur. These are the studs right here. The best guide that can get you up Kilimanjaro. We arrived at Sheer One Camp around dusk. Kilimanjaro finally broke from the clouds and showed us its raw power. Up until this point, we hadn't seen the mountain yet. We were absolutely blown away at the sight, and for the first time, we got to properly see what was ahead of us. Knowing that we were at an elevation of over 11,000 feet, grasping how high and enormous the mountain looked, it was truly hard to comprehend what was ahead of us. This is the point in the trip where it's going to start to get pretty ugly. It's 6.30 in the morning. We are both feeling the altitude. Woke up at 11.30 with the worst stomach ache of my life. Pat over here. I woke up at 11.30 too, but I didn't have the stomach ache. <laughs> what did you have? Eric sleeping next to me. The first night of actual labored breathing last night kind of sucked. So what Pat and I are experiencing is called high altitude sickness and this is just the onset but two times daily we check our pulse and our blood oxygen levels. These will also drop significantly as we ascend and the air becomes thin. We set off the next day around 7 a.m. through the flat moorlands trekking through the caldera of an extinct volcano. We made it past the climbing legend Scott Fisher's memorial camp. So we made our way through the moorlands, which is basically flat all day. This is the first real incline. See right behind me in the distance. There she is. We're at 13,000, what is that 650. Patrick? 600 feet. We out here, we're getting we up there. We out here for sure. I feel much better than this morning. We're pushing on at a good pace. We're almost at the porter pace, not quite. We got a long way to go. This is our first point really feeling the altitude. Yeah. That was a heavy climb after how, lunch. How yeah, and it's like our day today, it's down because we are very close to the camp. As you can see, we, it will take us like 10 or 15 minutes to the camp. So we knock down the day. Let's do it. Let's keep pressing on. Woo! <sighs> Let me catch my breath for a second. I have never felt the altitude this hard as I feel it right now. Mount Kilimanjaro has its own weather. Weather systems form when the air hits the mountain and uplifts and these thunderstorms pop up out of nowhere. I need to put the camera down. I need to focus on climbing. This is the end of the first Kilimanjaro video. In the next one, I will be standing at the top. No matter what happens with this storm, I'm getting to the top of that mountain. This is real. Yeah, we go down. Yeah, yeah we go down. No option, we go down just because of the weather. All right, let's do it. 
Do we turn around because of the altitude sickness? Did the storm let up? Do we summit Mount Kilimanjaro? You're gonna have to tune in to the final episode of the Kilimanjaro series to find out. The best is for last. This next video is unlike anything I've ever seen or anyone's ever done on YouTube. So make sure you subscribe and I'll see you for the final video.